All right, we are back this afternoon to continue our worship the 8th of April, 2023. All right, remember last week we went on the road just in the area and we will continue to do these things as a means of our effective street evangelism. We will, as the year roll on, month by month, go to the different areas as we must, for it is good to get wing under our feet as we go out to the people on their gates, on the road, in the side of the street, in the cars, we must still go. Because in the end, this is what we'll have. That's the last, that's the last of it. Soon we won't gather as we are. And that is what we will have left, which is to go to the gates and the streets. Even those who will be in their country living. Because God's people, this is a good plan about it. God's people are going to be spread across the island. Some are going to be in St. Elizabeth. Some country home is St. Mary, some is Portland. And when the gospel closes down on this platform, on this level, we will have that little time. You see, when you go to these country areas, you see some little people. You never see them? Homes, you're passing them, and you know sometimes these people don't know these things. That opportunity you're going to get in the 11th hour to these little simple people to witness to them. The last part of it. That's what I believe is going to happen. All right, so remember what we said. We're back to dress reform. There are some people who, based on their experience, um, they, they love one more than the other. That's personal. Some people like Adventist home. Then some people like this more. Say, so when you're coming back to dress reform? But nonetheless, it's the word of God, all right? And depending on where we are, we benefit the most. So we are back for all of this month in, on dress reform. Now you must understand, we're doing it lesson by lesson. So when we close the last time, that lesson is finished. What was the lesson? What was the theme of that lesson? So remember, this is a general theme, right? Always a theme. Dressing on earth for heaven, glory from within, to without but this is the lesson we are going into now what was the last lesson we did she wears the pants all right and we 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 came across a lot of information assignments were given we enjoyed that one she wears the pants and i pray that we understand and ladies speak to the ladies especially um after that presentation no lady here or rather who went through the experience of that lesson should be wearing pants Amen. now i know i'm going i'm not going to see you wearing pants um on sabbath you know no adventists know what they're doing but in the week he said boy i hope today i don't buck up pastor but but you know what if 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 you would have said that it's the wrong mindset do you understand Forget about me. That's the truth. Forget about me. I am just teaching the truth, the lesson. But there is one who you cannot hide from. Do you get that? And many times you, you go out there and you never butt me up. We never cross paths. But God sees constantly. That's what's important. And I want us to understand the seriousness of this. Um... When you learn a truth, the Holy Spirit then brings it home to the mind. And then a battle begins. That battle is for your soul. And it's against self. Are you there with me? And I will encourage us that we don't judge each other or condemn. Because you might not cross my path, but you cross each other's path. Are you there with me? And two things happen. One, sometimes the next person not even thinking of that but because you feel guilty because you say Lord Pastor Gwen no no because she gonna go tell nothing like that but you feel guilty because you know you shouldn't have been alright but it is the theme is right there dressing on earth for where 
That's where we're heading. Glory from within to without. And I want to spend a little time on that. Do you know what, what I mean when I says glory from within to without? Who want to explain? What do you think is meant by that line? Yeah. Yes. Right. So that is... So what I want, so both are correct. So what I want you to experience is righteousness by faith. What, what, what's a counterpart to that? Righteousness by works. Which is, which is not good. Because no man by their works can become what? Righteous. Or best righteousness is what? Filthy wrath. So that's why it says glory from within. To without and if you see how we teach the dress reform it's a conversion issue so you have to meet Jesus first but what I'm giving you is the knowledge so you know so you know that okay I understand this is wrong now you're gonna battle with Jesus like Jacob to overcome that's the conversion so that's the glory from within to without all right you don't want to get your skirts at your ankle but your heart is not in the hand of God. Are you there with me? All right, so we are going into a new lesson and it's called A Plain Distinction, Part One. A Plain Distinction, Part One. Remember, this is our Bible class. We entertain discussion, questions, statements by means of hand. Now let us pray as we begin. Loving Lord, Eternal Father, we thank you for all that you have done and you are doing. Continue to rub the rough edges. All of us have some. But Lord, you have done some work on us. To God be the glory. We have come a far way, but we are not there yet. We have to get there. Probation still lingers. We thank you. We go into this lesson, we place this Bible class in your hand. We ask that you take control. May your spirit rest in this place as it was earlier. We thank you for your love towards us, which is unconditional. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Always good to go back to our statement here. We have not seen it for a while. I start back here today. Please be inspired, all right? Not offended. Mm -hmm. Encourage, not disheartened, but determined to be all that we can be by the grace of God. Rejecting the world's immodest dress, all right? Attitude positions pride and right so all of that in one is what we are rejecting it's not just the physical look the attitude deals with the mindset all right the positions we talk about that positions in the world the pride and rights we start with the woman rights we, we went through that in the last um lesson and she says that's gwen shorter the seventh day adventist sister big woman i found out that when you seek truth earnestly god will give you truth have you experienced that too and she says consistent unequivocal meaning cannot be equaled truth superseded liberating truth right and as we see that the text should come in your mind shall know the truth truth shall John 8 32 liberating truth as we investigate these prophetic words may the Holy Spirit help us that's within now that's the conversion to understand our solemn duty to answer the call to return to biblical modesty and this word here is so powerful in 2023 femininity and true Christian womanhood all right 
by extension, even speaking to the men. Let's begin. The text that all of you should be able to quote verbatim. Verbatim. And I, yes, I'm bringing it back. There it is. The woman shall not wear. All right? That which pertaineth unto a man. And some like to speak about this text in, in Bible days. They talk about Jesus' time. No, the Bible was written for all time. And it can fit in all time. And this still fits. Because I'll say this to you in every society, in every era, in every generation, and in every culture, you always know how a man should look and how a woman should look. All right? How a man should look and how a woman should look. And it says here, um, neither shall a man, all right, put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. I, I was watching a program. There's this gentleman, Mr. Walsh, and he is a powerful advocate for the right thing as it relates to woman and man. He is pushing that there's only two gender. And when I see men like these and people like those, I know that God has his people he's going to bring. Are you there with me? But when I look at this gentleman, he's so bright and intelligent, and he's fighting that battle out there on the front. And, every, and he has these open sessions, and the, the transgender people come, and man, every time they come to the mic, he destroys them totally. Not arrogantly, but just the questions and the statement. And there was this um, transgender. So th th this is a man, a man. Biological man, are you there with me? Who is now saying he is a woman. All right? And the person goes along the line to say, I have so much friends and so much this and that. And they keep telling me, You're such a woman. You're this, you're that. So when you're here saying, and the person was saying to him, When you're here saying that um, no one will accept us as women, and, and all of them, and, and then he says, but that's the, that's the very point. You're validating what I'm saying. No one, I'm a man, and no one says to me, you're so much a man. It would be weird. The fact that these people have to be saying this to you proves my very point. You're, to, you're not a woman. For them have to be saying, you're so much a woman. Everything about you is a woman. Proves the fact of my point. No one says to me as a man, you're so much a man. No one does that. It would be weird. I'm a man, it's clear. But the fact that your friends and so have to be saying, you're such a woman, proves my point. Are you there? You get that? Yes. yes. So, so it is clear, we know even in this confused society, who is a man and who is a woman. And I remember him saying to another one, and now this is powerful because this one was, is a man who is saying he's a woman. But this one is also an EMT. Do you know EMT? No, those are medical persons. They rush out to your emergency. They are the ones you call and they come. And there was a battle between them. And he, this person is saying, well, not because you don't have this and that and so means that you're not a woman. And he says, I ask you one question. You get an emergency call and you go and you rush out to the person and the person says, I, I have a problem. It's a man. And he says, somebody with a penis. Clear? Clear? And he says to the person on the mic, so you're an EMT person. You rush out to the emergency, and there's this man saying, I think I had a miscarriage. Are you going to evaluate for that? And the person stood at the mic with nothing to say. And then the person said, well, no, uh, because, you see, it's a confused society. But there are certain things that you cannot go around. Claire, how are you going to evaluate for a miscarriage? Man don't even have fallopian tubes and uterus and all of that. All right? So we are clear today. Doesn't matter what era we live in, this text remains true. That a man ought not to look like a woman, dress like a woman, neither shall a woman. And this is called an abomination unto the Lord thy God. All right? And so we want to make it clear that in 2023, there is still a plain distinction. All right? Yes, Brother Clark. My little mic man. 
Brother Clark. Yes, pa. Yes, Pastor. Good evening, gentle people. You mentioned a while ago a man cannot conceive. No, I remember I said something to you one about a twin, which one swallows the other one what, during gestational period. Well, they found two more with the same problem. The man started expanding in stomach, and they couldn't understand what. And when they took him to the operating theatre, they found out that they had this young fetus that was stagnant inside of him. Now, whether it's sin caused it or whatever, it was proven that a child was inside the man. I thought I'd send that video to you. Um, I'm, I'm, so I'll make a statement. We know, and I'm borrowing this statement, we know that a human being has how much legs? Two legs. Now, now, that's a fact. You cannot go around it. You cannot doubt it. It's a fact. Which means that not because an anomaly, you know what's an anomaly? Something out of the ordinary happens means that that statement is changed. No, it is absolutely true. A human being has two legs. That's why. If you see a human being with one leg, what starts to happen? Something has to have gone wrong. Even if we don't know, we know something went wrong. Born that way, genetic deficiency. So it will not change the definition that a man, a human being has two legs. And we will not allow because of an anomaly to create a spectrum. No, we are not centipedes. We will not have three or four. Something happened, only two legs. The definition cannot be changed. Let's go back to what I just said. A man cannot conceive. That will be absolutely true. However, there may be an anomaly. There is a situation to which Brother Clark is referring to that in utero one twin can die and certain things can be absorbed at a certain stage. These weird anomalies, sinful genetic deficiencies and so forth, they do occur. Does it change the definition? A man, biological man cannot conceive. Will it? No. Something went wrong. All right? So these people who are coming with their different definition based on a situation, anomalies, and they say there's such a thing as intersex, that's an, a genetic problem. The, 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 the truth doesn't change. Human being has two legs. A man cannot conceive. There are only two gametes. X, Y. Are you there with me? These are things. Do you know what's the hardest question today for the woke generation? Alphabet people, do you know what's the hardest question? Tell me what's the hardest question. What is a woman? Do you believe that they can't define it? That's how dumb the generation has become. What is a woman? An adult female. Yes, that's what a woman is. All right? So those things don't change. But we do have anomalies, differences, definition will not be changed. All right, let's go forward. And again, we start with another star text. 1 Timothy 2, verse 9. In like manner, also, that woman do what? That woman... That woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. People today want to take this word, this, this word, and create another spectrum. You know what's a spectrum? So they say... Modest, very modest, this a spectrum, just like you have autism, diabetes, a spectrum, bad, mild, moderate, a spect everybody wants to go on a spectrum, a male, not so much a male, half a male, in between, intersect, no, no, truth and error, man, woman, light and darkness, righteousness, unrighteousness, this is what Satan want to do, the word modest here, modest apparel, it says there with shamefacedness, we can look these things up, their original meaning in the translation and sobriety, not with broided here, there it is, gold, pearls, 
costly array. The text is explaining itself what this word here means in the one simple verse. All of these things, look, broided here, one. Gold, two. Pearls, three. Costly array, four. It's not exhaustive. You know what I mean when I say it's not exhaustive? There are other things that could be added. Would you agree? But by just naming a few things, do you get a context of what the modesty is referring to? In the very text. Are you there with me? And some people say, well, as long as you're not worshipping these things. But the text said nothing about worship. The text is dealing with a modest apparel. What one ought not to be in versus what one ought to be in. Now, by the fact of it stating some things, not exhaustive, but some things, write it here. Gold, pearls, costly array. Then a part of modesty is the opposite of that. Without, write it here, no gold, pearls, costly array. Are you there with me? A part of modesty definition in this text is the opposite of that. That's the Bible. The Bible, by stating one thing, also states another thing. Can you agree? Because by me saying one thing, I'm also saying another thing. Right? That's the same thing with the scripture. So we will not go into any debate with the word of God. People who want to have their own way will debate. Just like the alphabet people will debate. But it doesn't change the truth. Alright? Plain distinction. Now, part one. What we want to learn is what is modesty in my eye. Uh, the church eyes. My friend's eye. Uh, church, pastor's eye. God's eye. That's what we're dealing with. The object of this lesson. What is modesty in God's eye? And you're going to find that we're going to touch on some things we touch on before some quote we touch on before repetition good all right this one here from the reference ctbh 87.1 it says true christians avoid what superfluity hope you know what that word means and display all right out there loud full of self superfluity showy Right? True Christians, they avoid superfluity and display. But their clothing is modest and arranged upon the person with order and taste. I like this quote. It's very balanced. Not because you avoid superfluity and display mean you must look. Mash up. What's, what's, some, what's some words Jamaican would use? Riff raff, I hear riff raff. What's, what's our one? Chaka, chaka. And, 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 and Ellen White, Ellen White makes a statement which is even more powerful than every other statement you're making today. She said in Adventist Home, we ought not to look like something that scares the crow. That's so, that's so heavy. I want to say almost embarrassing. If, if you look like something that scares the crow. Have you ever... What do they call those things they build in the... I don't see it in Jamaica, but you see it abroad. Scarecrow. You've ever looked at the name? Isn't it to scare the crows? You, you, they put up like a figure in the... Because I figure the birds will come and eat the things. So you, you put that in the field as scare. So that's what she's saying. You must ought not to look like something that scares the crow. There it is right here. You must be arranged mm -hmm, upon the person with what? Order, taste. I like the word taste. Some people say you're not on a taste. All right? Your colors must be arranged properly. You're neat and you look good. Some people put a bad look to dress reform because... Their colors, their the clothing, it's, they don't, and, and some people look at that. This is what I don't like. Some people look at that and say, Pastor, no, no matter where you teach, you know, me, no, I look like that. And Satan causes them now to go to the next side, which in order to not look like that, they go to now a length to break, to break the principle. 
Let me see if we remember. I hope I remember too. What are the four major principles? What take what you say? Healthfulness, one. Gender distinction. Modesty. Inexpensive. Inexpensive. All right? And those four principles you can use to guide you all. You don't have to get no more lesson from me. Those four. You ask the question, and if you can answer them confidently, you're on the right path. All right? So sometimes you can even see something, and it looks good, you know. Past the mark, you know. But the expense, the amount of money, you must question if you could probably buy a zinc, a sheet of zinc than to buy out this whole dress. You understand where I'm going? Your priorities, priorities, all right? Priorities, so I like this quote. We're dealing with balance. That's how we're starting this message. True Christians avoid superfluity and display, but their clothing is modest and arranged upon the person with order and taste. With order and taste. Let's go forward now. Do you see order and taste? Look at these pictures. Do you see order and taste? Do we need dress reform? That's a weak yes. Men, you ought to answer to, you know. Yes, it's not just women. Do we need dress reform? Oh, yes. Does our church need a reformation? And, and remember, we are Seventh-day Adventists. Even though we are here, any conference church, still brethren. We are one. Are you there with me? We are fighting for our souls and we want the truth to live in the truth. But they are still our brothers and sisters. Can you agree? We are Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, and does our church need a reformation in our dress standards? Is there any distinction between us and the world in our dress? And, and you see that question, it's personal. It's, it's two. It's, it's a general question. You can ask it to the church. Let's ask it to us. Is there any distinction between us and the world in our dress? And the us is Seventh-day Adventists. But we can become specific too. Is there any distinction between my dressing and the world? That's a personal question that you must think about and ask yourself. And I want you not to judge yourself because most of you might do that by Sabbath. Don't, do, don't use Sabbath. Sabbath is easy. We're, we're going to be put together. The real test is Monday, or Sunday to Friday. Real test. Sunday to Friday. The real test in the market place, in the supermarket, in the your every day going here and there that's the real test is there a distinction let's look at these young ladies this one over here they're just random per pictures huh what's the problem so what's the problem here huh some no there's no tear up right here yeah the pants and and what makes it worse it's jamaican says suck on it's squeezing you it Tight. And so, what does Satan achieve with this? If she was without any lower garment, it wouldn't make a difference. Do you understand what I mean? This shows, I mean, she doesn't have curve or anything really. But, but still, it's, it's really on her. And, 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 and you can imagine if all the right places had all the right things, even ten times worse. Because men are so visual. Are you there with me? Let's go over here. Same thing. Not so much. Yeah, there's a low, low cut right here, the chest. Um, I can't understand how people wear tear-up clothes. It's in now. I don't think a Christian... Let's talk about the men. I think I, you think I sound extreme? I think that might be a problem. Some real tear up jeans. Number one, I can't buy them because no matter if it's spacious, it just don't come off right. 
When I growing up and you get a little tear in a nice pants, jeans that you like, you remember what you do? You stitch up. You remember, you remember sometimes you can't have a stitch so well, but you get a piece of material and you patch. All right? And you wear it just the same. But now they remove the patch and tear the old, the, the, the tear bigger and say buy for more money. Pay more money for less material. And something wrong with my mind because I can't get past it. You ever see them hang up in stores? Lord. They tear up, string up. I don't think a man should wear that pants. A Christian gentleman. Right, Brother Clark says nobody agreed. But even more so, there's something about it that gives a rebellious, um, yeah. Poor, Brother Clark says poor self-esteem. Very poor. All right, so, so let's go over here. She doesn't have on her pants. Nice young lady, long flowing hair, and, and, and the top, she has on a jacket there that comes all the way down to cover even at her wrist. But let's go from the top now. Let's go from the top now. That's abroad. Um, I don't think people out here wear these type of shoes. Why? Isn't this like for cold weather? Obviously, though, she has made it into a fashion. When barrel come. But we, we can see, even if we were blind, how she failed. Are you there with me? We can see, even if we were blind, how she failed. Right? This is probably closer up the top to the mark. Right? But again, downstairs. And there is the dirty cut. This, this type of dressing now is without any taste at all. No taste here. It's dragged up, raggedy. Right? And right here is something else. She's probably on a beach, probably. But all of these fail the test. Doesn't matter where you are for the woman. Fail the test. No class, no taste. Someone says, I don't think they were going to church. I would probably agree, or probably not, today. Are you there with me? But we're not just talking about going to church. We're talking about every day of the week. Every day of the week. All right? So what are we agreeing to church? Are we agreeing, are you agreeing with me that we need dress reform? I can also say that since we have started teaching from last year, remember we took a break, came back, took a break again, I believe there are some people who have gained victories, and I want to say amen. Some people, no names, but people know themselves, they're gaining victories, and that's a positive. I want to say that, because I don't want to speak about it as if there's been no change. There has been change, all right? And we thank God. So there needs to be a reform. Of course, we can know we just use this picture for sending a message. That was when this brother was, was a man. You know who is this? That's Kathleen. <laughs> but that, that's a gentleman. He's, for me, he's still a man. No matter what he does. But this is the whole family, as they would used to be. Introduction to dress reform. So it says here, we have talked to many concerned SDAs. This is a person who did this, who agree that there's a problem of immodesty in our church. All right? However, few seem to agree where to draw the line between those fashions that are acceptable and those that are not. And that is why as I'm teaching this lesson, it has to be with a lot of pictures. Because while I'm reading and the quotes, you need to see with your eyes. So it sends a message to your brain in a picture form. So you can also understand, okay, yes, all right? So, probably not the best family to use, but still, it does send a message. Because, you know why? It is people like these who have an influence, can you agree, over the young people. And that influence has come into the church. It's come into the church. All right? And there we have an array of different types of fashion let me say something are these pictures old 
I don't think people dress like this anymore. Or probably it's a foreign, foreign young people dress like this. It does happen out here still. It is still happening. No, somebody says, no, old pictures, Pastor. Still sends a message. Even if the look in terms of the clothes is different, you must get the message from the picture in terms of um, modesty. Modesty deals with space, right? Versus too tight and too low versus too long, all right? Color, all of that. When everyone seems to have his or her own opinion, what can be done about the declining standards of modesty? And that's why we have to go back. All right? And the testimonies are there. That's our standard. And that's what I've done. I've used history. I've gone into some history while teaching this message so far. But you have gotten Bible and a lot of testimonies. Right? These things ought to be our guide. All right. We have found... The research. We have found that most leaders are not speaking on modesty because they are not aware of clear biblical principles that can be used to determine a standard for modesty. And today that's true. You know why? As the generations die and they pass off, all right, a lot of things got buried. So the new generation that arose, they know not the truth. Some of the young people today, if you showed them some old pictures of Adventism, they wouldn't know. You ask them which church is this, they, they probably say apostolic or something. They would not believe that that's where we are coming from. Because the pendulum has swung so far. So I believe it's a fact. It's a truth that today, some leaders, I'm not going to say all, some know some read, some reject. That's Ellen White, that's old time. That's, that's not today. God is dealing with your heart, uh, no matter how you look, as long as your heart is in the right place. That's the message today, right? It says here, because they're not aware of clear biblical principles that can be used to determine a standard for modesty, members sit by, apparently helpless, wishing someone would say something but not knowing what can be done. I remember in, matter of fact, that church was called, is called Louis Store SDA. Louis Store SDA. And if you're driving, coming from Kingston, and you take it across the bridge, the Westmoreland Bridge, that road to go to Clonmel and those areas, you will pass Louis Store SDA church and this is long before I was in present truth I remember I went to the church to do a program they're in a big church now but at the time the church was being constructed and they were over the field at a whole old building right now the building is broken down without roof but they were there at the time and I remember in the AY period I was there I think I spoke in the morning was in present truth or know the things I know now. And there was an old standard bearer. That's what I want to call her. And I remember she would always be, um, that's the word I want, protesting. And the young people were doing something. I don't remember in the AY. And she was protesting again. And they were against her. And the elder pulled her outside. And she was in tears and stuff. And I was talking to her. But looking back now, I can understand what was happening. And that's why it's difficult when you try to hold up the old standard. Now and to be in the building, it's hard. Because once you talk, once you, once you say something first, people start to view you. And they, you, they'll try to keep the mic from coming to you and they know, oh, here it goes again. That person gets the mic. And after a while, you start to feel distant, you know? And that's what starts to happen. It's, it's a, a bad feeling, right? Because it's like you're amongst family, but you're not. They're all strangers. And it's because of the truth, right? So there are members who sit by, apparently helpless, wishing someone would say something, but not knowing what can be done. Then, when someone has the courage to speak out, they are often labeled as what? 
legalistic another word fanatical another word judgmental and divisive divisive do you know those words familiar terms they come launching at you two things happen to you one you keep going and the burden doesn't leave so as you see the things you keep talking but when you keep talking these labels keep coming so the burden gets so heavy two things happen you start going and start doing what stay quiet for peace but it doesn't help your conscience it eats at you or number two you leave go somewhere else same thing you leave it's a toxic cycle toxic cycle but so we thank God we thank God and that's one of the things people don't understand they point fingers at you and say you have left here and there but they don't know what you go through and places like these should be a safe place where the truth without hindrance is given and people can fight with God and overcome on their way to the close of probation all right so let's take this quote now from selected messages book one pa page 48 and paragraph three what it says while we certainly need to guard against fanatism and i will tell you i don't like fanatical people and 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 i don't mean i hate them i don't like the fanatism and you find it a lot in present truth yes you you find it a lot in present truth all right i remember reading just in we're studying these half ages and about two chapters back when it speaks about jesus and um they said he would normally give people his food and there's a statement she made or he would give them a cool drink of water and i remember when i see it and i said boy there are some people that would pick this up and create an issue you don't know that there are some people that pick it up and say we should drink room temperature water and and if if it says he gave them cool water i wonder well there was no fridge around so probably it and and you would be surprised <laughs> what people will do with these things right i think you're referring to clay clay pots right would keep them cool but i'm just saying fanatism is not good and you have it in everything fanatism in the food fanatism in the drinking fanatism in the clothes and fanatism gets nowhere it's contrary to the character of christ because what it does it leaves the truth in a cold formalism that causes people to reject it are you there with me so the best example of one who gave the truth in the best way is jesus right never compromise so listen to the quote while we certainly need to guard against what fanatism all right and legalism legalism there are some people who are ready to condemn people they are ready listen there are some people they will walk with a measuring tape are you there with me they walk with a measuring tape they will measure the length of that skirt below the knee legalistic all right this is not the way that we want to go but there's an extreme to legalism and fanatism and that's liberalism it's what liberalism and that's where the church reach so so fine we don't want to be fanatical or legal or to be a legalistic person so what we do we drop the standard all together let it trail in the dust are you there with me and we just love people so the church gets fuller but the quan the quality the what the quality gets lower so that's the extreme on the next side it says listen we also need to be aware lest we fall into the very last deception of satan which will be listen to make of none effect the testimony of the spirit of God what is what is the last deception 
to make of money. What is she speaking about here specifically? What is she speaking about here specifically, church? Response. What is she speaking about here specifically? The writings, yes. Specifically, the writings of the testimonies, LNG White. Why, why specifically that? Is that the only writings that express the spirit of prophecy? The spirit of prophecy is given by God. Did Daniel express it? Did Elijah express it? But oftentimes people say, well, sometimes those people most times they don't even want the Bible, you know. They only want some part of it. Because some part that cuts, they don't want. So they say, well, uh, that, that's Ellen White. I, I go by the, the Bible. Right? And, and we have a lot of people like that today. Do you know there are people in the church, the Adventist church, they are leaders who probably don't even know if you say Ellen White, they say, who is that? Did you know that? Today in Seventh-day Adventism. So we have reached the place to make of none effect, church, the testimony of the Spirit of God. And you know what's the problem with people and the testimony? You know, what's, you know what's the problem with people? It's so plain. It's so plain. People will read something in the Bible and say, well, that, that means something different. Are you there with me? But when, 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 when testimonies of Jesus speaks in case of the last day prophetess, it is so clear. You don't need to go to theology school. You don't need to. It's so clear. It's so plain. It's a plain distinction. A plain distinction. So, let's go forward. All right. You may have heard the quote. Listen, we're going back at it. You may have heard the quote. The dress question is not to be our present truth. That statement was made by Ellen G. White. All right. And many people can use it to try and support their negativity. It says, you may have heard the quote, the dress question is not to be our present truth. To create an issue on this point now would please the enemy. Mm -hmm. He would be delighted to have minds diverted to any subject by which he might create division of sentiment and lead our people into controversy. All right. From this, so that's the quote here. But of course, we're going to look at it in context, all right? From this, you most likely concluded that we are not to teach standards of modesty because it would create division and controversy. And I can tell you, I can tell you, some pastors will run and get this. And if you're not studying, they throw that at you and you say, wow, yeah, yeah. But you need to understand context, all right? So from this, you most likely concluded that we are not to teach standards of modesty because it would create division and controversy. If so, then it is the dress reformers that are the one causing the trouble. That's a reasoning that people will come with, all right? And then, but is this what Ellen White meant by this statement? One of the practices I like to do, and I want to encourage you to try and adopt that, if I get a quotation, I always ask a question, where's the reference? You know why I want the reference? I'm going back to the reference, and I'm going to read the pretext. You know what's the pretext? Before the statement that they gave. And I'm going to read the post-text that's after the statement that they gave. You know why I'm doing that? So I can get the context of the statement that they're creating an issue with. So if someone sends one verse of scripture to me and say, look at that verse. When I get the verse of the text, you know what I do? I get a text, chapter 45, verse 10. You know what I do? I go to chapter 45 of the book and I go back up to what? Verse 1. And read and comb every verse. Comb every verse. Come down to verse 10 and even read after. That's how you study. That's how you allow the Bible to speak. And sometimes you can go to other books to correlate back with that chapter. To do that, it takes time. Precious time for your salvation. All right? That's what we need to do. That's a practice that we have to adapt. So let's go forward. All right? I'm sure you have seen pictures like this before. 
And I dealt with this before. I said, it's a different time. It's 2023. Uh, some of these dressing were not even accepted by God's standard then. So there's no way you could think that pastor is saying, I suppose I'm a look. No. All right. Let's read here. This is Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4. All right. Chapter 64. And you know what was the title? Simplicity in dress. Is that one of the principles of the four? Simplicity? All right. In order to answer this question, we must understand the circumstances when Ellen White wrote this. Here is a brief history. Now, in the 1800s, woman fashions were very displeasing to God for several reasons, all described in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, Chapter 64, Simplicity in Dress. You can take down that reference and go and just for your education. Read through that chapter. Now, how does this picture fail the test? How does it fail the test? Okay, so it fails simplicity. Is there anything else it might fail? Huh? Over, somebody said over. It's too much. Too much. So it fails simplicity. Um, what about health? What about health? Um, one of the things, one of the things with these dresses, you might not see it to the eye, but you know it's possible she has on what inside? Corset. So that's restricting the, 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 the abdominal area. But what we definitely can see, it's quite possible, it's just flowing right here. It might really take up what? Dust, dirt, filth. From the ground does that affect health oh yes oh yes and and it looks heavy my sister says it looks I figured if you're going to pick up a young lady that's gonna wear something like this if church starts 9 15 you gotta go and try and get her about no she needs to start get ready what time? <laughs> Sir Morgan says 4 a.m. Well, well, it depends how far the church is. <laughs> it depends how far the church is. But you get the point? It's going to take a while to get ready. It's going to take a while to get ready. That's the rich ones. Oh, that's a rich dress. All right. All right. That's... That's, that's a comeback. That's a good point. Might be a rich person, yes. In those days. Brother Clark. Yes, Pastor. These dress are wearing right now, you know. The problem is it is that one time them used to wear a car set to them off a drawn string up. Now them just put on a gurglar or tights. Now, you have a thing them called Kremlin that is coming back in style. You go to them big party, year in party and thing, and you see them woman light dress, but them have on the Kremlin. Something that goes around and spread out the dress. So it's not like the whole time car set where them used to draw up and them have to take in them belly and two people around there with them knees and them back as lace up. Them things are done gone. Mm. But it is still wearing. And silk is a light material. So most of them are making them out of silk. If you look at those elaborate weddings, I don't know if anybody remember Beanie Man wedding. The I don't wife, think we would remember that, no. The wife had on a Kremlin. Something that lift, push out the dress. And okay. she moved like feather. So it's not like one time when them used to wear two ton of clothes. It is much different now. Yes. So one of the things about fashion, you know, you know it's revolving. You know what I mean? It's, it's things from the past that comes back. You know that? Yes. And, and then what text would you use? Nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. Alright, let's go forward. I think Brother Clark is referring to... Um, so this is the outside of the dress right here. This is how the person would look. But what they did on the next half, they removed the dress so you can see this the Kremlin okay that it says here first their fashions were time-consuming 
See what I'm talking about? Uh, to time consuming, to study and prepare, and expensive to make. Second, they made an obvious divide between the rich and the poor. Even that God, you, you know why God would have a problem with that, really? The distinction between the rich and the poor. You know why? In order to make a distinction between rich and poor, here it is. That's it. That's it. And that's wasting God's money many times. Many times. So we're looking at some issues. Number one, time consuming. Number two, so number one, time consuming. Number two, divide between the what? Rich and the, the poor. Number three, third, they were extremely harmful to the what? The health. Number four, they were impractical to wear and time consuming to care for. Because I can't imagine washing something like that. That's number four. Finally, they did not protect modesty as the hoops required that the skirts often had to be raised, creating indecent exposure. God's people who were following these worldly demoralizing fashion were in need of dress reform. And that's all the way back then. So because of how it is, when they were stepping, what did they have to do? Lift up. And what would get exposed? The legs. All right? So that's defeating the purpose. That's defeating the purpose. And we went over this. We're scanning back again as we start back. Huh? There were worldly dress reform led by the women's right movement. We looked at that already. Which God's people were not to follow. And we know what's wrong with this. All right? See Testimonies of the Church, Volume 1, Chapter 83. Again, for your reference. For your education. This style, the so-called reform dress, was first called the bloomer. You remember when we went into that history? So as I start back, I'm brushing, right? And, and did that come from somebody's name? What's the full name? Huh? Amelia Bloomer. All right? All right? So then it was called the American costume. It was distinguished by a short dress from a little below the knee to a little above the knee over the pants. That's it right there. All right? Um, weird. Weird. But Satan was doing something. He cut the dress, start the pants, then lift the dress, leave the pants, then lift the pants, almost nothing. That's what he did over time. And then we had the Adventists, right? We dealt with this too. You remember this caused controversy? An Adventist reform dress was designed that would not have any of the negative features either of the fashionable dress or the so-called reform dress. A pattern was created so that women could make a tasteful dress that would be healthy and yet attractive. All right? That was in the time of Ellen White. Difficulties arose, brushing over, as a response to this reform dress pattern. Many did not make the dress properly. All right? with some only making a few alterations to their fashionable dress and others using no taste in making the dress. No taste, all right? This, the first group cared too much about how they look. And be careful of that, that caring too much about how you look. There are some people, they look in the mirror 15 times before they leave the house. You think I'm exaggerating? 15 times. I'm just making a general statement. Before they leave the house, we have to be careful of that complex. All right? So one person cared too much about how they looked. Notice she said too much. Some people don't care at all how they look. That's a problem. Do you, do you follow? Do you follow? I'm, I'm giving you balance. The statement is saying that. It says, some people care too, T-O-O, -O, too much about how they look. That means the opposite of that is wrong too. Some people don't care at all how they look. Right? That's why you must be refined in order with taste. All right? Some people care too much about how they look, still wanting to fit in with the world. With the world. 
they were resistant against giving up worldly fashions. So they made their reform dresses extravagant and showy. I remember one time, some memories really don't live like people. They stay with you. I remember one time I was sitting down with Elder Cunningham in those days. And he, he was talking about a certain brother. Now the brother wanted to go into country. And that's a long time. I wasn't thinking about those things those times. But what's funny, um, he was talking about the brother. But the brother was talking about going to country. And he says he's going to set up his satellite dish. And it's warmer and and when the brother finished talk, the elder said, but I'm a country, I'll go, yeah, take the whole city, carry going out of country, you know, you know, because of the things that he was, so it, should you be comfortable? Yes. Should you try your best to live, as she says, as kings and queens, but can you go to the extreme still? Yes, yes you can. You can go to the extreme still by doing so much that you even waste money that could have been used to help people. Now, I'll tell you from now, you don't need satellite dish. Well, they don't use that anymore. People, don't use, people use that? No, that's big and, and that people don't use that. One time you would see a big old satellite. That's old technology. Now they use as things as small that can hold in your hand. That can do more than the big satellite dish. But my point is, what the dish used to do, you don't need that in the country. All right? You don't need that in the country. Character development is what we're dealing with. Those things can open a door to corrupt, to corrupt the um, character. Right now we're using the internet and we use our smartphones and it has a lot of positives. But that same device is a struggle for many of us with different things that many of us now have to try and detox. Isn't that true? So as we are going into the country, we don't want to open doors that will make our country live in not as it ought to be. All right, so the first group, they were resistant against giving up worldly fashions, so they made their reform dresses extravagant and showy. The second group, the second group cared too little. You see that? Extreme on both sides. How they looked, even apparently being proud of looking odd. See that? That's another group of persons. They, they, they were proud of looking odd. You see the quote, 289 Fundamentals of Christian Education? That group, you know, that says the people are going to look at them as straight-laced extremists. They're not trying to look like that, you know. They're just following God's way. And the world is going to look at them strange. But this second group was making an attempt to look odd. They became fanatical. That's what's going to happen when you purposely want to look odd. They're going to become fanatical and made a religion of their dress. Mm -hmm. Trying to force it on others. This caused them to neglect the inward adorning God desires us to have. Don't become fanatical. I was relating with a brethren about a certain group. This group is what they call so-called anti-Trinitarian. You know, they have that group around now. They're Seventh-day Adventists, but they, they say present truth too. But it's always that issue for them. That's their issue. And he has a family member that has gone with the group. And they, they are in Portland. They're going for their country living. That's okay. That's fine. But he was relating a situation that there was a certain sister or husband and wife and they have a young baby. So these people have gone too far. They're fanatical. They, they don't believe. Here, here's a stupid thing about it. They don't believe in science. Is science bad? No, no. But are there negatives to it? Yes. Now, the conventional medicine, the hospitals, is it all bad? No, but is there negatives to it? Yes. Are you there with me? But they are so fanatical. They are totally against the system. And there was this couple there with them amongst the group. And you know, you know what is meningitis? Meningitis is when bacteria. So anytime a word ends with itis, remember it's what? Inflammation. 
No matter how big the word is, just look at the end. If it ends with itis, otitis, phlebitis, right? It's dealing with inflammation. You just need to understand the parent word to know inflammation of what. All right? So, this baby had meningitis. So, that means it's inflammation of the meninges. And the meninges is a layer that covers your central nervous system. You know what's that? It covers your brain and your spinal cord all the way down. That means bacteria has gotten there in the spinal fluid. All right? And, you know, when they're trying to get the spinal fluid from the baby, somebody has to take the baby and bend the baby like that. Bend the baby. You know why you do that? The bones that are on top of each other, when you bend the baby, it, op it pulls the bone apart and open the space so the needle can go in to take out some spinal fluid. All right? And you have to know where to go because if you get it wrong, baby can be paralyzed. All right? So it's, it's a... But nonetheless, that's how you're going to test for the bacteria to treat the baby. All right? So, so of course, they are there with them, their group, and the baby's sick. Fever and baby's sick and... And they're trying to treat this thing naturally. And sometimes people doing those things and they don't fully have the knowledge. So baby is going to deteriorate. And that baby is going to die. If some emergent medical attention. And this couple went, went, they went and carried the baby to the hospital. And baby got treatment and so. And it seemed like because they did that, they and the group fall out. So, so that's fanatism. That's extremism. That's cultic. Are you there with me? So, so we have to be careful, church, of, 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 of this word here. Don't be fanatical. But there are some people who are on the next extreme. Every time you try to bring certain truths to them, they throw that at you. You're fanatical. So, so let's not be in any of those. They became fanatical and made a religion of their dress. There's no religion that ought to be made about dressing. All right? Trying to force it on others. You never try to do that. Even if you're amongst me and your dressing might not be right, you're not going to see me talk to you about it. I'm already doing it here. I'm already teaching it here. I don't need to say anything more. All right? You now need to fight that battle. All right? So it says, this caused them to neglect the inward adorning God desires us to have. That's why we say glory from within to without all right let's press a little further so then came this this looks good of course of course of course we're in a different time but we're going to follow the same principle of modesty but even if even if a young lady dressed like this today you think that would look extreme not probably the same material clothing but looks like that I'm asking an honest question. You can answer honestly. What do you think today? It says, the many problems created by these two groups that we discussed earlier in response to the reform dress are also outlined in Testimonies for the Church. Volume 4, Chapter 64, Simplicity in Dress. We quoted it before. During this controversy in the church, dress reform had begun to catch on in the world. That's one of the things that happened in her time. The world was actually picking up, excuse me, this type of dressing. So it was catching in the world and a more affordable, simple, healthful, practical, and modest dress. There are the principle, affordable, inexpensive, simple, healthful, and practical, modest dress had become available for women to wear. All right? So this dress was longer than the reform dress, all right? And SDA women were much more willing to adopt this style. As they wouldn't stand out so much from the world at that time, these were the reasons that this particular reform dress pattern was laid aside. Which one? This, this one there. Closer to this one. This was laid aside, right? And the church was now working with this because this was acceptable even though it was coming from the world at that time how about today where is the world gone oh we, we can't accept nothing from there are you there yet yet 
some women wanted to continue to push the reform dress on others for the very reason that it created a separation between them and the world. And this is the background. Remember the first statement I read that Ellen White said that people can use? This is the background why she said it. Because the church had passed that stage. There needed to be no controversy. This dress came now in the world and it was acceptable. This type of dress and it was acceptable. But some people were still fighting a battle that had been won. Right? Yet some women wanted to continue to push the reform dress on others for the very reason that it created a separation between them and the world. They even desired to make it a test of salvation. Once you reach there, that's fanatism. Because your dress is not at your ankle, you're going to be lost. Fanatism. Now, God's principle must be abided by, but it must not be forced upon. All right? So, so they even desired to make it a test of salvation. The counsel not to create an issue of the dress question was directed at this group. So you see, even in, the, even in Ellen White time, you had problem in the church, like this nature. It's worse now, I believe, but I'm showing you a history there. Black and white pictures, can you see? Long time. So she was speaking to this group. It was actually an answer to a question from one of these overzealous dress reformers, as we can see at the very beginning of the letter. There's the letter. In answer to the questions, this is a real, real picture, a real, real picture of Ellen White and her husband. Real black and white picture. So she didn't have that look like white, white woman. She was mixed. All right, so that's, that's Ellen White. All right, and James White. All right. All right, so in answer to the questions, that have, been re that have recently come to me in regard to res resuming the, the reform dress, I would say that those who have been agitating this subject may be assured that they have not been inspired by the Spirit of God. So that group, even though it seemed like it was a good thing, it wasn't. So which spirit was working through them? Satan to disturb the church all right so they weren't being led by the spirit of god the lord has not indicated that it is the duty of our sisters to go back to the reformed dress all right um, and and it says here the story of our health message that's page 441 sister carol My. looking at miss miss white dear you would consider that to a mother to be dressed she have on if i'd consider it a what it's a mother to be dressed that she ha she have on there at the moment a, a mother mo mother to be yeah maternity, maternity. Oh. are you then asking me if at this stage in the picture I'm, I'm looking if you are looking at it properly to say are you are you asking me if at this stage in the picture she was with a child yes <laughs> Sister Carol, um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I let me go on then. Um, nowadays, you notice mother-to-be then, pregnant mothers, they're not wearing loose clothes to give okay. them. Okay, okay, good, good point. And at first time, mothers used to wear, you don't even know if they are pregnant or what, because they ha we hide our... But nowadays they wear, I wouldn't say hide, comfortable. Nowadays they wear some tight up thing. I wonder if they're squeezing up the babies, them or <laughs> what? Yes, yes, you know? yes. So, so, so you started at a certain place, but you went to a good place. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good point. Very good point. Um, isn't that true? They, they, they're, they're pregnant and, and, and you see, they're, they're almost fully ready. But the clothes is tight on them and and I wonder in my head are they still trying to say I'm hot I look good I don't know but but sometimes when you look at it just looking at it it, it hurts your head because when you look at it you wonder <laughs> sister Carol says you wonder well that's not happening but you wonder if the baby is 
inside I can't read <laughs> but that's not happening though but you wonder but it is sad it is it is a sad thing today um, very sad these young mothers um, it looks tacky and sister Carol they have no taste they have no taste it's sad but let's leave our sister here alone she's she's good all right she's good I think by then she had had based on how they look in terms of age by then they they had passed having their what she had four boys I think so four boys two died early one earlier than the other and two went to adulthood all right four boys she had no girls all right so let's move on here selected messages book three paragraph no page 242 paragraph four it says later in this letter she counseled she counseled time is going she counseled i beg of our people to walk carefully and circumspectly before god follow the customs in dress as far as they conform to health principles let our sisters dress plainly what is our title for this lesson plain distinction let our sisters dress plainly as many do having the dress of good desirable material appropriate for this age and let not the dress question fill the mind our sisters should dress with simplicity they should clothe themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety give to the world a living illustration of the inward adorning of the grace of God and I would say amen how much to go we're closing up let's see yes all right three slides to go all right so let's go to this one now it says here note and we we dealt with this extensively I'm just brushing back as we go into this next lesson this age in the previous quotation refers to the age remember we went into that refers to the age in which she was writing remember where fashions were healthful simple and modest we went into that a lot it does not refer to any age that anyone may live so as you read in it it's that time for that quote as fashion deemed appropriate for the previous age of hoops and corsets were not approved by God. You cannot see this picture. You would have to be blowed up. This is, a, this is Seventh day Adventism, though, long time. But be honest, be honest. Even though you cannot see the faces and clearly, what comes at you from where you're looking? What, what comes at you? Modesty. You see, you see the woman? All women in a look at that. Wow. Can you imagine you see a group of young lady in Adventism now take a picture like this? I should have a picture like that right beside this and show the contrast. Then, now, it says the dressing, dresses during the time period that God approved of the fashions was approximately 1880 to 1900, that 20 years span. That was the time she referred to appropriate for this age. Look at, look at the dressing, look at there nice oh okay take a picture to show okay <laughs> let's read here when the principles of healthful simple modest dress have been presented to the people and all have been made aware and have been left to accept or reject the teaching trying to then impose and enforce dress reform upon those who are unwillingly willing only causes rebellion let me do that again when the principles of healthful okay when the principles of healthful simple modest dress have been presented to the people like I'm presenting it to you and all have been made aware mm -hmm, and have been left to accept or reject the teaching I cannot force it I teach it you must make a decision trying to then impose that's why I don't do that I don't see you down there and say hey what you dressing you know 
trying to then impose and enforce dress reform upon those who are unwilling only causes rebellion. That's why it must be glory from within to without. It only causes rebellion. We take one hand, finally, and then we go to, to the end. Mic is on. Go, go, go. The text, um, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, which talks about the adorning of the heart. Mm. From any extreme, if you go to the extreme of wearing that which, and then the other extreme of not wearing, dressing um, shabbily, extreme, to any extreme you take it, you neglect the adorning of the heart. You spend too much time trying to look like the world, you're going to neglect that which is important, which is the adorning of the heart. And then to, for you to look, to go to the other extreme, you're going to lose focus. And that is why modesty is important from either end of the spectrum, if you want to put it that way. What God says is gives us enough time to look good inside and outside. Amen. And it is, what's what we're pushing here, it's conversion. It's what? You know, in my early days, I remember when I was young, younger, we're talking about 19, 20, 21, 22, those days in the church, man, preaching, crusades, and it really was a thing that uh, you'd be affected just to see people. And you'd want to talk to people and, you know, and, and even though you preach. And, but over time, you mature to understand that I'm here to do what God put me to do and not to do God's work. I preach, but I cannot convert. You get that? I show, but I cannot change. That's God's work. That's God's work. All right? And so I do not take on that burden to force. After I present here to all of you, my shoulder is clean. You don't have to worry that I'm, you're amongst me and pastor must say, look at my dress cause it's short. I don't have time for that. I'm dealing with my own heart. But when I come now at church, I give you the clear truth. Can't say. People in the building church can say, I've never heard it, was never taught to me, even though that won't excuse them because they can read. But you can't say that here. You can't say that here, all right? And so, in coming, you only will make yourself more guilty. I want to encourage you, fight to change. Because the judgment will be heavy on that day. Let's close. 1 Samuel 15, here it is. The Bible says, for rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. And let's use a, a Jamaican word. We want to put here for witchcraft. Obia. So if you are rebellious, you are in the same group as the Obia man. All right? And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Who committed iniquity? Lucifer. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. That was God's message to Saul in his rebellion. But it's God's message to me and all of us. Are you playing with the spirit of rebellion? As we learn these things, church, let us reform. All right? Let us reform. Let, let me tell you something, my sister. Let me tell you something. See when you're dressing right? Long, nice, covered dress. It looks good to a godly man. A man who that doesn't look good to is a fleshly man. It just looks good. When you walk in and nice, it just looks good. Imagine how God feels. Imagine how God feels. These should be the thoughts that encourage you as we go forward. Gentlemen, we ought to also dress to look like men. And the real test is not today. Not for you women, not for us. The real test is after the sun sets, the rest of the week. That's where the real test is. All right? The sun is setting. Angels are about to leave. I think it's appropriate to close now and to close the Sabbath.
because that time is here. Let's, let's pray. Loving Lord, eternal Father, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. For all that you have done, for all that you will do in your church and for your church. So now I place these brethren before me in your hand as I place myself. Save us, Lord. And amidst the challenges, this church, this ministry continue to press until you have finished your work totally in us. Lord, continue to bless this place. And may the fact that we are here change this school as we are being changed. We wait for what you will do because we're confident because of what you have already done. Lord, as the angel leaves with the record, I pray that our service today would have been acceptable to you. Bless us now, Jesus, as we depart. Give us a good week and strength for the untried week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.